Good day everyone. Today on the bench I'm going to tie up a royal pheasant tail dry fly. Here's a really nice fly that I've seen on Fly Fisherman magazine many years ago. Uh, contributed by uh, David LeBroughton over in Armstrong, BC. David's a very good fly designer and uh, excellent photographer. He's actually the guy that does the Fishing Dreams calendars, if you've ever seen those. Does some nice photos out of New Zealand. He spends a lot of his winters over there. So. Anyway, let's give you the materials uh, to tie the fly. I'm going to use a Gamagatsu standard uh, uh, dry fly hook, size 12. For the tail, I'm going to use some uh, moose body hair. The body we're, for this fly, I'm going to use uh, peacock or pheasant tail fibers, I'm sorry. And also for the hackle, I'm going to use some, this is a grizzly brown. Uh, dry fly saddle, you can use brown or whatever you like. And the wings, I'm going to use some pearl crystal flash. This is kind of a thinner crystal flash. The thorax, I'm going to use some antron. This is an antron assortment. I'm going to go to kind of the reddish uh, coloration there to kind of blend with the pheasant fibers. So we'll get a hook out of the bag here and Start one of these up. This is a nice, uh, nice fly that I've used it for a long time, and uh, it's just—it's actually a great pattern for these big western rivers we fish, and and uh, it'll ride some a little rougher water. It's got a lot of great flotation, and uh, the thread I'm using today is an 8-aught dark brown uni thread. I like it. It's not the smooth thread. It actually holds my materials a little better. Get that started. We're going to go to get a little pinch of our moose body here off the hide here. Clean out the under fur. Put it into our hair stacker. Line up the tips. Bring that down. One of the hair stacker here. Pull a couple out. I'm going to be shank length on the tail. That's why I like the uni thread for anything I'm using with hair. <clears throat> it's not a smooth thread and it catches and holds materials very well. I've got a lot of tailing material on there. I'm tying this one up for some rougher current. Then I'm going to come in with my crystal flash. I'm going to cut off what I would require for one wing. Cut that off the hank there. Makes great winging wing material. It's easy to use too. That's why I like using it. I'm going to tie it on good and tight. Come forward. Try the both coming forward. It's still split. I'm going to grab this wing. I'm going to pull it back a little bit and then tie it. What I've done there, I've kind of got a really nice X on there. I'll get get both these wings. Divided nice. So the, the X is right on top. Looks good. Now, you get to trim off a lot of this excess for now, just make it a little easier to work around. Okay. Going around to the far wing, and I'm just going to take some turns around the base of the wing. Kind of gather up the material. I'm taking fairly loose wraps, and then I'll stand the wing up to a 45 degree to, to set the wing. All right. Now I'm going to come to the wing closest to me and do the same. I'm just going to go around the wing, some loose turns for now. Just get a just gather up the fibers, and then I'll pull on it when I get it to the top. There, and I've got it pretty much 
or 45 you can see there it looks pretty good so I'm just going to take the thread to the back the wings what I'm going to do here now is I'm gathering both up at the same time I'm going to pinch it off kind of where I want it for the length I'm cutting it at a very severe angle and that'll give me really nice fan wing that looks good that's a pretty easy easy way to do a wing and it's really really bright and you can see it from a long ways away a lot of times I like throwing these flies a long way to the outside banks stay away from your trout as, as far as you can it's a lot more stealthy of course you throw longer casts at them you want a fly that will float you want a fly that you can spot and you want a fly that will catch fish and this one covers all the bases catch my pheasant tail at the rear Dave was one of the first guys I ever met when I went over to the Elk River when I was starting to fly fishing and he was very helpful, he sent me on a told me about a couple of streams that he recommended as well and uh, at that time they weren't very well known those bodies of water <coughs> so they're very nice very thoughtful of them and they get a lot of a lot of good fly fishermen out there so willing to to share and help you out it's been a great sport bringing my hackle in here I'm going to cut the sides off my hackles see a bit of it's a little bit rough and then I can just catch that in right here and it will not pull out Okay, then I'll go to my Antron. The little dubbing packs are nice. Got all the varieties of colors. They're great when you're taking stuff on the road. They're good on your fly time vents too. Then I'll just dub the thorax. One behind. I'm just going to start getting nexting through my the wings when I come forward. We got a good space left in the front. I'm going to take three turns a hackle behind the wings. I'm going to come to just to the front of the wing. Two, three more. And I come in and that should hold everything in place. Got some good turns on the front where my eye is. Get my whip finish underneath. Saw off the thread. Clip my hackle off. And there's a royal pheasant tail. If you're you find the wings are a little bit too long. Pretty easy, pretty easy to balance that out. That's a pretty little fly and it catches a lot of fish. It's been a good one for me for over the years. So thanks to David LeBroughton for that one. I'd like to thank you again for watching On the Bench, Sport Fishing on the Fly. We'll catch you again soon. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca and if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.